Well, by overwhelming popular demand, we're finally reviewing Jedi Knight Jedi Academy. <laughs> this is my first time playing Jedi Academy all the way through, and I've got to say, I'm sorry I never gave this game the time it deserved. Jedi Knight Jedi Academy is not the fourth Kyle Katarn game. It's more of a sequel to Jedi Knight's gameplay, really, than, than to Jedi Knight's story. In Jedi Academy, you play as Jaden Kaur, who's this neophyte Jedi who's sent to Luke Skywalker's Academy to join the new Jedi Order. Jaden can be male or female, or it can be one of five different races. But yeah, of course I'm gonna go Keldor, like my boy Plo Koon! The Imperial Remnant are still kicking about, and there's now rumblings of this new dark side cult cropping up all over the place. So the Jedi Order they need fresh blood and they need people to be out there solving all these problems. In the first five minutes of the game, Jaden meets Rosh Pennin, a ballsy young pup who's out to make a name for himself as a great Jedi warrior. And you think, oh hang on, this lad's a bit keen and he probably wants to watch himself because whenever anyone gets this impatient with the force, oh, oh, yeah, he did it, yeah. Evil. As part of his Jedi training, Jaden sent on all these smaller missions. I actually really liked this. It was like a really old school gaming experience. You know, you've got your desert level, your snow level, your flying level. There's a really good The Floor is Lava level. A whole year before Half-Life 2 came out, by the way. And even better, there's a level set on a high-speed hover train. Yeah. Originality might not be Jedi Academy's strongest suit, but, you know, variety probably is. Objectively, a lot of these missions could have been quite drab. Most of them just involve going from A to B, maybe fighting some dudes, and then eventually just triggering a cutscene. Some of them do require a bit of puzzle solving, but that's usually it. Now it's the variety, actually, that keeps the game feeling fresh, and I didn't feel bored at all when I was playing this game. Kyle Katarn does return in Jedi Academy. This time, though, Kyle's an NPC. He's an instructor at Luke's Masasi Jedi Temple on Yavin 4. Bringing in the Masasi Temple, actually, is pretty cool, because it ties neatly into those Jedi Academy novels by Kevin J. Anderson. Those books came out, like, ten years before this game, and they don't cross over in any significant way whatsoever. I, I love them, but I think they make a really good connection between this game, this era of the Star Wars universe, and actually also the Old Republic. I just love how all this Star Wars mythology just kind of like overlaps and interweaves with itself. I could just get lost in this stuff for hours, man. Oh yeah, anyway, sorry, Kyle Katarn. I have to admit, I did do a little fist pump when Kyle turned up, man. Like, this guy is my favourite Jedi ever, but I was a bit disappointed that I never got to actually play as him. You're playing as Jaden the whole time, and obviously I understand that it would be stupid to have Kyle start again from scratch, like, because obviously you do need that progression curve. Like I said, I, I get it. But it would have been nice, maybe, if in one of the initial stages you could see what it was like to control, like, a fully powered-up Jedi Master. So you could be like, oh, cool, this is what I'm going to aim for. This is how it feels to be this powerful in the game. A really good example of this probably would be The Force Unleashed, that opening level where you're Darth Vader. Kyle does, however, escort Jaden on a few missions, which is actually brilliant. It's even better than when Luke accompanies Kyle in some of the missions in Jedi Knight 2. It's just me and Kyle, man. Just two grey Jedi chipping around the galaxy, zapping the sh** out of the bad guys, chopping limbs and taking names. Speaking of the grey Jedi, yes, Jedi Academy does continue this idea of the grey Jedi, the force user who walks the line between the light and the dark side. Now, I mentioned this concept in my Jedi Outcast video, and and Academy builds on this a little bit more. Kyle mentions during Jaden's training that, in fact, powers from both sides of the Force will be available for him, and it's up to him, and I guess therefore you as the player, to choose the best way to fight your enemies. In the first Jedi Knight, every single power was locked and had to be unlocked individually. In Jedi Knight 2, all of the powers were unlocked on a linear curve, so there was no decision making at all on the part of the player. Jedi Academy kind of has a hybrid of both of those games. Core powers, like saber throw and force jump, force speed, these are already unlocked and they just naturally get better as you go through the game. But there's now two banks of additional skills which the player gets to upgrade themselves one point per stage. You can't take them all though so you will have to kind of think about this the light side sees the return of things like force sight force healing force protection these come from the first jedi knight game and i'm really happy to see them back because i missed these powers in jedi outcast the dark side has other eerie powers but i didn't choose any of them because i'm a goody two-shoes me well i did take lightning zap 
About halfway through the game, Luke, Kyle and Jaden all discover the end game of this cult of Ragnos. They've been harvesting dark side energy from places with strong connections to the Force. Around about this point, Jaden is promoted to being a full Jedi Knight and is given his choice of lightsaber. And this, oh my god, this is the most significant improvement from Jedi Knight 2. You can choose just to have one normal blade, you can dual wield akimbo lightsabers, or the most badass choice obviously, the double ender. Now every choice comes with its own range of unlocked moves, combos, lightsaber forms. The single bladed lightsabers use the fast, medium and strong forms from the previous game. The saber staff however is always locked on strong mode because you know it's just for f***ing people up man. Building on the player customization that I mentioned earlier you can even customize your lightsabers. You can choose the, the blade color, the hilt design and if you've got two then you can mix and match. Now people have been telling me that the lightsaber combat oh is so much better in Jedi Academy and I've just been like yeah yeah whatever there's just like more stuff you know more doesn't mean better <laughs> nah it, it is better even the single bladed saber has got more going on you got tackers aerial moves new ways to interact with the environment more combos man i was going wild about the lightsabers in jedi outcast but genuinely the lightsaber combat in jedi academy is second to none mate there is still this big online community of people even after all these years still swinging lightsabers at each other it's it's awesome man newer star wars games have come along they've turned up the polish they've massively increased the visual quality Fine, but no game since Jedi Academy has had such a deep, rich combat loop. Jedi Knight 2 does still have a better story, but if you're looking for deep and rewarding combat gameplay, Jedi Academy is the game you're looking for. Thanks so much for watching, this was so fun to put together and thank you for pushing me to actually play this game, so glad I did. Please subscribe for more Star Wars gaming videos and for more old PC stuff. Cheers.